Society. Uh, he's been interested in astronomy since he was a kid. He still has his first cardboard telescope. Although he didn't get a real telescope uh, until he retired in 2001. He had never heard of uh, uh, astronomy clubs, and now he's, he holds the record for being in the most, I think. Right? <laughs> John uh, retired as a dermatologist from Farmington Hills, and his hobbies are his grandchildren, digital photography, uh, as well as astronomy, and organizing the largest website on, on the island of Maui. Hey, John. Thanks, Ralph. Before I tell you about astronomy at the beach and Great Lakes Stargaze, I think I just want to mention that we all owe a lot to Diane, who twice this year saved astronomy at the beach, the greatest event in Michigan in astronomy every year. Uh, the Ford Club used to handle it, and they uh, found out after years of running it, and Diane stepped in and took over to lead the Great Lakes Association of Astronomy Clubs that puts on this event. And then, as she mentioned to you earlier, there was a crisis a week ago that threatened to kill this event a month before it was going to take place, and you don't know how close it came to this event never happening again. And Diane spent a lot of hours and a lot of work, a lot of emails and a lot of time on the phone to uh, give us a quick fix on this and get this liability issue settled so that we won't have any problem with us having to sign waivers or having personal liability for this event. So I think we all owe Diane a lot of thanks for keeping that event going.
Some people sleep in trailers or RVs. There's a lower field separate from this main field that has RV hookups. I don't like it quite as well in the lower field because there's more trees, a little bit more lights from all the uh, trailers. But if you want to set up an RV, that's the place to do it. Some people stay in motels. Some of us don't like to sleep in tents, and so uh, we consider a, a roughing it being a hotel that doesn't have room service. And so there are several uh, motels uh, 15, 20 minutes away. That's where I like to stay when I go to this event. Here's a few Warren Club members of uh, recent year at the Great Lakes Stargate Steel Park with me, John Lyons, Bill Beers, Bob Berta, and Doug Bach. Uh, Bill Beers had this shirt on last year at the Great Lakes Stargaze. I am not allowed to say out loud any of these sayings that imagers use that are printed on his shirt, so you'll just have to read them for yourself. Here's some uh, Ford Club members at a Stargaze about four or five years ago, and some Oakland Astronomy Club members. So you get people from all the clubs. Vendors set up tents there, so you can buy more gadgets because there's never enough gadgets. Dave Lackell sells meteorites. You can buy those from him at this event and also at the Kensington event that I'll be talking about in a couple minutes. There's a swap meet on Saturday morning at the Great Lakes Stargaze uh, where you or anyone can sell any of their uh, gear and you can pick up some great bargains. There's porta potties on the big field and there's real bathrooms on the lower field, so it's about a five minute walk down a, a little trail to the lower field where you can have uh, showers and real bathrooms. You don't like the porta potties. They have great guest speakers each year. Michael Bockich and Phil Harrington, astronomy magazine writers, were speakers in different past years. Last year, the main speaker was David Levy, uh, astronomer, science writer, discoverer of 22 comets, including Comet Shoemaker Levy. So you get to meet these people in person, talk to them, hear their talk. Plenty of spare time between the talks to just chat with these people one to one if you like to. There are a lot of door prizes at the Great Lakes Stargaze. I don't know how they do such a good job of collecting them, but they have way over 50% of the people there winning door prizes. So here are a few of the door prize winners in past years. Diane, Jim Frisbee, Bill Beers, Bob McFarland, me, Bob Fitzgerald, John Root, Ken Anderson. Uh, food's very important factor to me in any event I want to go to, uh, as you can see by the uh, food I brought for tonight. So uh, some people like to cook their food out in the field. You can imagine those of us who sleep in tents don't like to do that. Those of us who don't like to sleep in tents don't like to do that. So uh, some of us go out to restaurants. There's a big group that went out to dinner one night. Uh, one of the great things about going out to a meal at this event uh, is you get to meet people from other astronomy clubs. Uh, it's great to find other people who enjoy the hobby that you haven't met if you've only been going to this club. So come to the Great Lakes Stargates. This year it's from Thursday, September 29th to Sunday, October 2nd. It costs $50 registration fee for the three nights. If you register by August 31st, it's $15 more after that date. If you Google Great Lakes Stargaze, you'll find the website greatlakestargaze.com and you'll find all the details about it. Or see me or email me if you have any questions because I've been going to this event for a lot of years. Next, I want to talk about astronomy at the beach. Here's a scene at astronomy at the beach, the yellow balloons indicate solar telescopes, so when the public arrives before dark, they know which telescopes they can go up to for a picture of the sun. It's put on by all these local astronomy clubs together, meeting in an organization called GLAC, Great Lakes Association of Astronomy Club, to put on the event. And it's held at Kensington Metro Park. This is on the I-96 Expressway, exit 151. Go into the park and follow the signs of Maple Beach. They also put up signs during the event that say astronomy this way. Folks come from near or far to go to this event. <laughs> it's a beautiful setting on Kent Lake. Again, you get a good variety of scopes, solar scopes <coughs> and regular scopes. You can walk around and see all of these great scopes. There's uh, you have plenty of time to set up in the daylight. You can drive your car down there and set up your scope before it gets dark. <coughs> Some people set up outside the pavilion, they drop down some sheets from the pavilion to block out the pavilion lights to keep it dark on the field. Here's the Warren Club dog being set up. Here's our uh, dog trailer with our club dog being set up on the field. It's always a big draw. Uh, there are people with big scopes like Ken Anderson who brings his 17 inch. People with uh, normal size scopes like Jim Shedlowski setting up here with Jonathan and showing Jim his SCT. There are educational present presentations for families, so bring your spouse and your kids. Uh, kids especially have a great time. I've been bringing my grandchildren to this event 
every year for a lot of years, and you see the result is I have a granddaughter who loves astronomy and went to space camp and talked to us about it a couple months ago. So it's a great chance to introduce your whole family to astronomy on a level that's intended for the public and for the kids. Um, here's Jerry Denifer from our club doing a presentation about how cold is outer space with some liquid nitrogen smoke going around. Yes, I know it's not really smoke. Uh, this year's schedule, it's the same schedule on Friday night and Saturday night, so you can come either one or both nights. I always go on both nights because it's fun to one night go to all the uh, scheduled talks and the other night interact with the public and be one of the volunteers. So from 6 p.m. to sunset, there's solar viewing. From 6.20 to 10 p.m., there's planetarium shows in an inflatable planetarium every 20 minutes. Great shows for the kids. 6.15, there's comet making demonstrations. 6.45, the kids participate in a constellation story. 7.30 p.m., there's liquid nitrogen fire tornado and some spinning demonstration. 8.15, there's light pollution talk. 8.40 is a 3D tour of the solar system when we pass out 3D glasses to everyone in the tent. And at 9 o'clock, at night, as always, well the keynote address this year is about the solar eclipse coming next year. <clears throat> the great thing about this is getting kids excited about astronomy. Kids love everything they see in the telescope, and it's just a thrill to show them things. Here's some Girl Scouts looking at a big meteorite. Here's Mike Bruno from the Ford Club. He has a great setup where he uh, made some balls that are uh, proportional sizes to the objects in the solar system. He has a weather balloon for the sun and then balls for the planets. This is my grandkids looking into the wrong end of the data. Here we are at the Warren Club table. I suggest you spend an hour at the Warren Club table. Don't be afraid that the public's going to answer you, ask you a question you don't know the answer to because uh, their questions are pretty simple and you do know the answer. And if you don't, there's plenty of other Warren Club people there beside you. And you can just pass the question along to them. So it's a great time just sitting at the table for an hour either night and answering questions from the public and telling them about our club. Here's the Ford Club table. Tables from a few other clubs. Seven Ponds, Detroit Science Center, which is now the Michigan Science Center, Wayne State University, the Oakland Astronomy Club. A couple of years, Mead has had tables there. Dave Blackall, I mentioned him at the other event. He sells meteorites there. You can buy meteorites for anywhere from 50 cents on up to hundreds of dollars. So I've uh, managed to buy my grandchildren meteorites there every year for a dollar or so. At the club tables, we pass out literature, we tell people about our clubs, we answer astronomy questions from the public, we hand out kids scavenger list forms and take in the filled out forms to give the kids the prizes. Most importantly, we share our enthusiasm for astronomy. So volunteer to join us at our club table for an hour on one of the two nights. There's also great guest speakers, as I mentioned, every year. Here in 2011, we had Astronomy Magazine editor David Eicher. In 2009, we had Bob Noya, who was then the editor of Sky and Tell. In 2012, we had astronaut Drew Feustel, who's from Michigan, working on the Hubble Repair Mission. This year's special guest speaker is Mr. Eclipse, Fred Espinac. He's the person that knows the most about solar eclipses. As you all know, on August 21st of next year, there's going to be a total eclipse of the sun from the contiguous United States for the first time since 1979. Wow. Fred Espinac is a scientist emeritus for NASA the world's expert on solar eclipses. He's going to present a detailed preview of this event, complete with maps, photos, and weather prospects along the eclipse route. He also wrote a book about this eclipse that describes the weather condition prospects for every spot along this whole route from west coast to east coast. So I do recommend his book. You can find it online by Googling his name and the uh, eclipse book. David Levy is also a contributor. Yes, yeah, David Levy also contributed to the same book. So this keynote presentation is going to be from 9 p.m. until Friday and Saturday nights, the same presentation both nights. On Saturday afternoon, every year, the guest speaker, whoever it is for that year, in this case, uh, Mr. Eclipse, Fred Espinac, gives a separate talk just for astronomy club members. Now, the great thing about this talk is that the talk, for the, the talk on the evenings is designed for the public, so it's a very simple, low-level talk. But he can give a higher-level talk for us astronomy club members on Saturday, so it's a much better talk for us. And we don't have to be away from our telescopes or be away from the table in order to hear them because it's held at a separate time when the public's not there on Saturday afternoon. And best of all, it's a small group. There's only maybe 40 people at this talk. So we have plenty of chance to interact with the speaker one-to-one. -one. There's plenty of time before and after the talk to talk to the speaker one-to-one. -one. So this is a chance to meet somebody who's a top astronomy person and interact with them. Uh, one year it's an astronomer, one year it's an editor of Sky and Teller 
our Australian magazine this year, we have Fred Espinac, so always a great chance to really meet somebody terrific and talk to them on your own. Here's an example. Here's uh, where an astronomy magazine editor was talking to a small group of us at a Saturday afternoon event. So come to Astronomy at the Beach. It's on Friday, September 9th, and Saturday, September 10th. The event is free. The park charge is $10 per car if you don't have an annual Metro Park Pass. You can get details at this website or just Google Kensington Astronomy, and it'll be the first hit that you see on your Google search results. Or see me or email me. I've been going to this event for a lot of years. So the title of my talk was why, should you, why You Should Go, so let me tell you why you should go. Not because you might win an ethos eyepiece, as Bob McFarland did here from Kevin Day in one year. Not because you might get a good deal on some astronomy equipment, as you can do with the uh, swap meet. Not because we get to tell the public how excited we are about astronomy and make them excited too. Go because it's fun. It's fun to share our hobby with other amateur astronomers from multiple astronomy clubs and with the public. Why are these people smiling? They're smiling because they went to a strong <laughs> the beach, and you should too. If he's sold you on it, I do have the clipboard up here. Thank you, John. Okay. You know I'm biased. Yeah. The past years, we've been able to get it for free at the park. If we show them a badge from the club that belongs to Yes, my experience has always been that if you show a badge or say you're representing the club and you're bringing your telescope, that the gate is always let you in free. It's not an official policy, so I can't promise you that, but that has happened in the past that they'll just say you can get in without a pass. If it happens, great. If not, try to have 10 bucks handy because as you said, you can't dictate the part of having in the gate. Jonathan. John, what's your favorite single astronomical observation you've made at each of these events? <laughs> At um, the Great Lakes Stargaze, the best thing was seeing M51 in some huge dot under dark skies. At Astronomy at the Beach, the best thing is talking to little kids. It's not a celestial object, but it's my favorite thing to do, because little kids are so excited about anything you talk to them about astronomy. Great. Thanks.